Hi everybody, Bob Gager from Adobe here with another installment of Ask Bob. Today's question comes in from Carol, one of our Facebook fans, and Carol wants to know how to use the perspective crop tool that was added in Photoshop Elements 15. Hey Carol, thanks so much for posting some photos. Uh, these are perfect for demonstrating the new tool. I've already downloaded them off of Facebook and opened up a couple of them right here in Photoshop Elements. All right, let's get started. So maybe some setup stuff first. Um, you'll notice up on the top, I am in expert mode. If you happen to have uh, Photoshop Elements either in quick or guided, uh, make sure you switch over to expert mode to see the same interface that I'm using here in this demo. So what we're going to do is do a little cropping and perspective adjustment of this photo. Uh, there's a new tool in Photoshop Elements 15 called the Perspective Crop Tool. If I come over here uh, on my toolbar on the left-hand side and I select the Crop Tool, that's this one right here in the top section of the, or the top left of the Modify section, go ahead and click on that. Uh, down in the bottom, we want to select Tool Options to make sure our tool options are showing. So it starts off with a regular old crop tool. We don't want to use the regular crop tool. We want to use this one right here. It's called the perspective crop tool. So go ahead and click on that. It's going to change the tool options, of course, and change the way the crop tool works. So what's really cool about the perspective crop tool, it actually does a couple of functions all in one tool. And that is cropping your photo as well as adjusting the perspective of a photo. So lots of times you get a shot like this where you've got a big tall building, um, you're pointing your camera up a little bit and you get what's called keystoning where the top of the, of the building kind of comes in just because of the difference in the distance between uh, your camera lens and the bottom of the building and your camera lens in the top of the building. And uh, this is not actually the look that you might want. So we're going to use this perspective crop tool to fix things up. And it's pretty easy. Just uh, move your mouse up somewhere on your photo. Uh, so I'm going to start up here, uh, kind of in the top left, and just drag across your photo to get the crop rectangle showing. So you can see uh, we start to draw a crop rectangle. There's this grid of uh, horizontal and vertical lines uh, that are going to help me line things up. If the grid is not showing, that's what this uh, little option right here uh, is for. In our tool options, make sure show grid is selected. And then all you have to do is adjust the four corners. And so what's really cool about this is I can move this uh, top left corner around uh, anywhere I want. I can move the left edge out a little bit. Uh, I can move the bottom left corner, right? I can pretty much tweak how my crop rectangle looks uh, in, in two dimensions with any single corner. And what you want to try and do is get these horizontal and vertical lines to line up with something in your photo. And so the way I usually uh, go about this is to first try and find what I want the center of my resulting crop to be. Um, and so you can see right here, we've got uh, a, a little indicator to show us which is the center vertical line right up there. So I'm just gonna move my right edge out a little bit until I've got this center vertical line kind of going straight up through the middle of my building. And then I just adjust my edges, or I'm sorry, my corners. So I wanna make these kind of all the way to the top. Um, and then I wanna bring them in until these vertical lines match up with some vertical lines of my building. And so you can see kind of this is this vertical line is matching the edge of the building. Uh, over here on the right, we want to do that as well. So kind of pull the top in a little bit uh, and really tweak the, the angles of this crop rectangle to match up with my building. So I can pull, as I mentioned, the edges in and out. I want to kind of go all the way out. The trick here is to try and maybe make sure that the bottom corners are still within your image uh, and the top corners as well, of course, in case you're adjusting the, the opposite direction. And then, as I mentioned, try and make sure the center point is sort of centered on um, the building that you're trying to adjust here. So I'm going to pull the left in a little bit and kind of get that center right in the center, something like that. And then just go in and double check things. So make sure like this line here, this is a good reference point. You can see uh, down here it's touching the column. Um, let me highlight that for you. So down here it's kind of touching the column. Uh, up here it's a little off of the column. So we're just a little bit off. So we want to pull 
that left edge out maybe just a little bit or and or pull the bottom left corner in a little bit and just so we've got this vertical line really going right up and down the edge of that column and this one's going right up and down the edge of that column and then go look at our, the edges of our building so this vertical uh, line is going right up and down the edge of the building there and over on the right uh, that vertical line is going right up and down the right edge of the building so kind of play around with it a little bit adjust the four corners until you've got something like this uh, the bottom maybe I want to pull the bottom back down a little bit so I don't crop off the bottom of my photo uh, maybe we want these uh, folks in the foreground because we might know them and then once you've sort of got that all lined up just hit the green uh, check mark right here uh, that will go ahead and commit the current operation and here's where the magic happens you can see not only is the photo cropped but the perspective is also adjusted so the the photo is a little more straight up and down instead of skewed uh, like it was in the original now this is looks pretty good um, there may be a, a, a further adjustment that i might want to do to get rid of maybe a little bit of the distortion it looks like i probably used a, a wide angle lens i've got a bit of distortion as a result of that cropping that that i might want to tweak out and so the next step that you might want to do is uh, up here under the enhance i'm sorry under the filter menu uh, that one of the filters is something that we call correct camera distortion go ahead and select correct camera distortion and there's a bunch of controls um, really probably you know for just a little tweak after using the perspective crop tool uh, this first remove distortion one and I can tweak this slider uh, and sort of create uh, an adjustment of this pin cushion effect and so if I slide it to the left that happens if I slide it way to the right uh, that happens of course I don't want to go to the extreme kind of start here in the center and for this shot I want to go just a little bit to the right um, not a whole bunch uh, I just want to play around with this until things are looking kind of normal I can check and uncheck this preview uh, checkbox here to kind of see the before after so you can see I'm not making a drastic adjustment here but just a subtle adjustment to make things look a little squarer if you will um, go ahead and click OK and it will apply those adjustments to my image and you can see here we've got that uh, uh, perspective crop and a little bit of camera lens distortion correction applied to my image now one of the things that you might also want to do is something I've noticed when I've used uh, this technique uh, to fix buildings like this they look a little squashed from a height perspective um, the aspect ratio just isn't quite right so I'm going to go ahead and close my tool options just down here in the bottom my hide tool options button I'll do that uh, to get a little more screen real estate back and then what I want to do now is sort of stretch this picture a little bit. So first thing is I need some room to stretch because the top of my picture is already at the top of my document. So let's go make our document a little bit bigger. And I'll pick image, resize, canvas size. So here we go. I want to resize my document canvas. Uh, I like to work in pixels. So instead of 1,389 pixels tall, maybe let's make our canvas size 1,500 pixels tall. And then this anchor box here, we want to grow or we want to add these pixels along the top. So we click here on the bottom, which means we're going to grow from the bottom to the top. And then just go ahead and click OK. And you can see we've added some additional space above our original photo. Now let's just make a selection. Kind of start right here at the top of our photo drag across and down you know sometimes you might want to go all the way down in this case we'll just go all the way down select sort of all of that area of our photo click on our move tool that's this one right over here click on the move tool and then grab this little anchor point or handle right here and just drag up a little bit and so you can see we're stretching our photo vertically at this point and so that just looks maybe a little more natural. You can uh, make it even taller if you want. Decide for yourself sort of how much you need to, to uh, stretch it tall. It's going to vary by your image, of course, so there's no real magic number. Uh, just keep trying different options and see what looks good with your particular picture. 
once you've got it at the height, again, click the green check mark to accept that uh, transformation. And there you go. We've got our image now uh, cropped and perspective adjusted. Uh, so it looks a little nicer. Um, and it's kind of as simple as that. Let me go do it again to your other photo. Now this one, um, I'm actually going to not use the perspective crop tool. I think we just saw how to do that. But I'm going to go back into that other tool, the um, filter, correct camera distortion, and just do all of it. So sometimes the perspective crop tool is what you want to use. Uh, it's really quick and fast and easy to get the results you want. But sometimes uh, your photo needs a little more control and fine tuning. And this, uh, this shot here is an example of that. So it's that same correct camera distortion we used on the other photo. But I want to use this tool now to adjust the perspective. And so we can adjust the vertical perspective by sliding this slider around, uh, either to the right or to the left. Uh, we can also adjust the horizontal perspective by sliding this slider, maybe you know, move a little to the left, move a little to the right, however I need to adjust it to make it look good. Um, I want to actually move it a little to the right. And then I also want to adjust this edge extension slider at the bottom. See, as I mess with some of these sliders, part of my image gets pushed off the edge of the canvas. And so I don't really want that to happen. So I just need to grow my canvas a little bit. So you can see if I slide this to the left, uh, we get some additional space to work with around the outside of our original photo. So you can mess around with both of these sliders, uh, maybe a little bit of horizontal perspective adjustment, a little bit of vertical perspective adjustment. You know, you don't want to go too far because then things look sort of wacky. Um, so just a little bit to get it kind of looking good. Uh, make sure that vertical lines in your building are actually vertical, uh, stuff like that. And I can also, the beauty of this tool, is adjust the angle a little bit. So if things aren't quite uh, level on the horizon, I can fine tune that by just adjusting the angle. Now I can click on this little control and uh, make things spin all over the place. Um, but if I really want some fine control, I probably just want to type in a number because you can see you know, the difference between zero and the first step over is 4.75 degrees. That's a little too much. So I actually just want to come over here, select this, and maybe type in two degrees. Uh, and we're pretty good. Again, look for vertical things in your photo compared to vertical things, uh, or I'm sorry, these horizontal and vertical uh, lines uh, inside the uh, correct camera distortion tool. And then keep adjusting things until things are pretty much lined up. So something like that. Uh, you can see we're uh, cropping the top of the building again, and we don't want that. So just come over here to edge extension and adjust that again to make sure we've got all of our building inside of uh, the, uh, the canvas area of this tool. All right, so we'll do that. Uh, once we get things looking good, we will uh, go ahead and click OK. And then that will apply those transformations to our photo. Now we want to come in and crop things up. So back to our crop tool, uh, open up our tool options because we don't want to use the perspective crop here. We want to go back to just our regular old crop tool and bring the bottom up maybe to the bottom, something like that. Uh, bring the top down, something like that. Uh, bring the sides in. You know, depending upon how much uh, you want to try and get rid of a lot of this empty area, uh, if you can, uh, something like that, and maybe the left side will bring the left side in like that. Go ahead and click the green check mark uh, to apply those changes, and there you go, we've got it cropped in. Now, let me double click on the hand to get things to fit, and actually double click on the magnifying glass and scroll down a little bit. You can see we've still got some blank area, right? The, to the right of these cars. Uh, there was actually no picture there, so we need to deal with that. And there's a couple ways we can deal with that. Let's go ahead and zoom in again. And mostly it's just about um, cloning uh, other parts of your photo into this part of your photo. So we'll go ahead and grab our clone tool. That's this one right here. Uh, go ahead and click on that. Uh, this isn't a detailed tutorial on the clone stamp tool, but basically select the tool. 
put your mouse over top of an area that you'd like to copy from. So maybe right from here and hold your Alt or Option key down to create this little target cursor. Click where you want to copy from and then move over somewhere else in your photo. And you can see, let me make my brush a little bit bigger. You can see I'm essentially going to stamp on that part of the image somewhere else in my image. So get something that lines up nicely like maybe this and then just hold your mouse down and start painting. So you can see as we paint around, we're painting uh, out uh, that part of the picture and we're copying in or cloning in a different part of the picture. So we can clone, clone in stuff like that to get rid of it. Um, we've got a little shadow going on here, so maybe hold your Alt or Option key down again, something like that. Click down here on the sidewalk over here get things lined up and a little bit of cloning to get rid of that oops that doesn't look good at all let me command z to undo it and try again so clone kind of there we go that looks much better and we want to do it one more time kind of over here on the far right kind of clone out those shadows um, and you can see we've also got some uh, some duplicate here of the of the wording on the uh, storefront here. You know, we can use similar techniques to clone out uh, the wording that's incorrect. But um, that's the basic technique. Uh, and so here is the after. Uh, let me switch back uh, and let me double click this one. There we go. So there's our there's our before and there's our after. So you can see it's not perfect, um, but it's uh, much more uh, uh, straight up and down than the original photo. Hope that helps with the perspective crop tool, but also gives you a little more information about another tool here in Photoshop Elements under the filter menu, this correct camera distortion tool that's used for similar adjustments to your photos. So until next time, I hope you have fun using Photoshop Elements and feel free to ask more questions here on the Ask Bob page. Take care.